Welcome to Amman. Hi everyone and welcome back to our third and final instalment of this beautiful villa we've designed out here in Muscat and Amman. Today we'll be looking at the more informal areas including the family room behind me and the show kitchen next door. But if you haven't seen part one where we looked at the entrance hall, the library, the formal dining room, the majlis and the tea room, make sure you check those out first. But let's get started in the family room. Welcome to the family room. This room is located at the very back of the villa overlooking the beautiful ocean behind me and it's the most informal of all the living spaces in this home. This room is all about relaxing, lying on comfortable sofas and watching TV. As this room is all about comfort, let's start with talking about the sofas because they are the most important piece in this room. We decided to break one of my design rules when we were designing this space. Normally, I always like to mix up the style of upholstery and seating so that it doesn't feel too repetitive, and some pieces might be more sculptural than others. But in here, we really wanted to prioritise comfort, so we went for these really beautiful oversized sofas. These are all custom designed, and I think this one's about six metres long, so they're absolutely enormous. When it came to the colour scheme, we also found a lot of inspiration locally. There's a beautiful wadi in Amman called Wadi Shab, and it has the most incredible peach coloured stone and aqua waters in monsoon season. So we took that inspiration into the colour scheme. You can see we've got the aqua cushions and some aqua accents around the room, like the table lamps, the throws, the accessories. And then we've got beautiful peach tones on some of the cushions and the incredible rug. Another feature I love to use on really comfortable sofas is to have extra wide arms. They're really relaxing for putting your arm on, you can lie on them. And here I wanted to make sure that the detail was still elegant, so we did this tapered beautiful curve and then we mirrored that onto the side table. It's really good to have a side table. Again, I feel like I'm always saying it, but you want to make sure you've got somewhere within reaching distance to put your drink. So we exactly mirrored the same curve on the table as to the sofa arm, and it looks so satisfying when you see it from above. If you're designing a large room and you can't find the right scale pieces, don't despair. You can always double up or triple up on items. For example, here we had the perfect coffee table, but I didn't want to do one huge coffee table because it would have been too big to style, too big to clean. Instead, by having a pair, it's much more easy to use. You've got good circulation around the room. If someone's serving drinks, they can easily reach and go through the middle. And then above me, you can see we've also gone for multiples. Here we've gone for three chandeliers. And the reason we did that was because in this room, it's obviously a very big room, but we didn't want to interfere with the view of the TV by going for a really oversized chandelier that would naturally also be taller. So by going for three, we've managed to fill the space. It looks really dramatic, but it doesn't impede the view of the TV from the sofa. After the sofas, the next most important thing in this room is the TV, so we went really oversized. This is 85 inches, and then to balance such a large TV, we knew we needed to design a really special piece of joinery. We've made sure that we've distracted from the TV by doing this huge book match marble centerpiece. This is a locally quarried piece of marble, and I love how the colours tie in with all the colour scheme in the room. Although this piece of joinery had to be very large to suit the scale of the room, we are also conscious we didn't want to make it too heavy, so it still felt balanced with the furniture of the other side of the room. And how we did that was we made a floating design so it looks like it's floating on the wall and it just gives the illusion of more space and feels a lot lighter. For the joinery itself, we had this manufactured in Amman and we worked really closely with the joinery team out here. We did all the drawings, we provided samples for them, we did a lot of site visits to make sure that it was being executed as per our design. One of my favourite parts of it, as you can see, we've got this very subtle fluting detail at the back of the shelves, and that was to, just to break up this large flat expanse that otherwise would have felt quite plain and boring. Then for the shelves themselves, we've gone for a liquid metal finish, again just mixing in some different materials, and we've done lighting above each shelf with an LED strip. Through the styling, we've managed to bring the accent colours onto this side of the room by using objects like photo frames and faux planting. The shelves are quite shallow, so we had to be careful which objects we pick so they didn't overshoot the shelves themselves. This is one of my particular favourites, and it's from our Addison Ross collection, so I'll put the link in the description box. 
For the window treatments, because there's glass on three sides of the room, we didn't want to have a heavy material that would have felt inappropriate for the setting, but we also wanted to make sure that we could make the lighting much more dim so there wouldn't be too many reflections on the TV. Because this is overlooked by the garden, we also wanted to make sure there was enough privacy. So this very heavy, slubby shear was the perfect solution. It's kind of in between a shear and a curtain and still allows some natural light to come through when they're drawn. I think I'm yet to find an interior designer that doesn't love designing cushions. They're such a great opportunity to really inject some colour and pattern into any room. Here you can see we've done a lot of clashing patterns and in a mood board this might look a little bit too much but dispersed across such a large room it really just adds the perfect injection of colour and we've taken all those key colours that we want throughout the room into each of the cushions. I always like to mix up a couple of neutrals in between the two bolder colours so here you can see we've done a much more paired back taupe in between the aqua green and the peach and that just breaks out so it doesn't feel too overpowering. So that's all for the family room. I absolutely love this room. It's one of the brightest colour schemes we've done. But now let's go and have a look at the family show kitchen. Next to the family room we have the show kitchen. It's called the show kitchen because they also have a secondary kitchen where all the actual cooking takes place. This room is more for the family to eat in an informal environment, maybe do some very light cooking, maybe even unbox some takeaways. It's a very popular concept across the region and it's something that works really well and it means that we can elevate all the finishes and materials in here slightly more than we would if it was a very heavily used kitchen. Because the kitchen itself is so pared back and simple, we really decided to elevate this space by adding some statement lighting. I'd say my favourite piece in this whole room is these four pendants. Normally, above an island, it's very typical to have three large pendants, but we decided to mix it up because by having four small ones, it adds a lot more detail and interest to the area. These ones are made of a selenite crystal, this section, which glows beautifully when they're switched on, inside a brass cup, that's been darkened so it matches with all the bronze elsewhere in the kitchen. Even though it's the show kitchen, we wanted to ensure it's still practical. So for the worktop, we opted for a sintered stone. It's kind of like a porcelain finish, and this is a faux statuario, so it's got lots of lovely veining in it. It's really interesting, but the colors are quite muted, so it's not overpowering in the space. We've then continued that same worktop up onto the splashback and even into the basin, which is a detail that I really like. If you were to do this same design in marble, I'd be very careful because if you live in a place where there's lots of lime scale in the water, it could build up a lot of residue and it could stain. But with this faux stone, it's a lot more practical. For the bar stools, we created a bespoke design for this project and the ethos behind it was that we really wanted to add a lot of detail, again, to counteract the simplicity of the rest of the kitchen. We wanted to make sure they're really comfortable, so we've done this upholstered back and it's got a little mini armrest, so it's really comfortable to sit here for a long time. And although it looks initially fairly simple, you can see that it's got several sections of upholstery, it's got a mix of different materials, we've continued the legs up high, and I really love that particular detail, it looks very structured and architectural. For the light pendant above the dining table, we went custom. To achieve this level of scale, you would never be able to find anything off the shelf. We developed this design hand in hand with the client. We looked at lots of different options and sketched out lots of ideas and it took us quite a while to finally land on this design. But I'm so pleased with how it works. To me it almost looks like palm leaves sort of wrapped together so it feels very appropriate to the location. When you're doing two pendants or two style of pendants in a kitchen, it's important that you find a design that works together but doesn't compete with each other. They need to complement each other. So what I like about this design is, again, it's using the same materials as the pendants above the island behind me, but it doesn't have exactly the same color. We went for gold rather than black because black would have felt too heavy on this design and quite industrial, but the gold really warms up the space, which is what we have on the inside of those cups. It still feels like it works together, but it has its own identity and it feels a little bit warmer in the space. I really love to do round dining tables. I find they're a lot more sociable. So if the size and the shape of the room lends itself to it, we always try and go for that option. 
This particular one can seat 10 people, which means that it's got a really wide diameter. Normally that means you wouldn't be able to reach into the centre of the table. So to overcome that, we've designed a one metre Lazy Susan. I think it's the biggest Lazy Susan we've ever done. And it means you can reach whatever sauces and food you want in the middle. I think it also works really well with a light pendant. And then for the finish itself, we've gone for another faux marble on top that complements the worktop in the kitchen. And underneath it's got a fluted base, which is quite simple. The clients wanted fully upholstered dining chairs, which obviously in a kitchen is quite an unusual choice. But again, you've got to remind yourself that this is a show kitchen rather than a really busy working kitchen. To overcome the fact that upholstery in a kitchen is quite unusual, we opted for a very slubby linen. This one's from De La Cogna and it makes it feel a lot more casual. For the rug itself, we went for a round design that complements the shape of the table. And then we've gone for a combination of wool and silk. The client really wanted something that was soft underfoot and would soften the space. And then we've continued the veining shown on the marble floor through onto the pattern of the rug. Flanking both sides of the dining table, we have these buffet sideboards. We designed them custom, and we wanted to introduce some curves so it echoed back to the design of the table. We also had to be careful with the depth of the sideboards because we didn't want to impede all the circulation around the table. And my favorite element about them is these curved doors, and inside we've got some glass shelves where the client can store all their crockery. So sadly, we've come to the end of this incredible villa tour. I've loved showing you around, but before we go, I wanted to sit down with the two lead designers who worked alongside me to create this incredible home. I don't do any projects by myself. It takes an entire talented team to create the magic and create these interiors that we do all over the world. So I wanted to sit down with them and get a little bit more from behind the design, all the ideas and inspiration, and how we created this amazing space. We are finally at the end of our install, our photo shoot and our video shoot. It's been such a huge achievement for us as a team. Yeah, has, I'm so proud it? of what we've achieved. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But obviously I've been the only one that's been on camera and I really wanted to take an opportunity to show the designers that were the lead designers on this project who were Brett and Anthony, who have worked so hard for the past five years and I thought it would be great for you to give us a bit of an insight behind the design. So are you ready great. for your first question? We are. Far yes. away. So having just finished this project, how are you both feeling? <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure I'm coming down with a call. Oh, no. <laughs> now you tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the distance. Yeah. I think what you mean by that is we're very, I think we're both very proud. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say, sorry for putting words in your mouth, but I think it's Oh, been, no, yeah, I should say that. It's been a very, it's been a very good journey, um, a long one, but everything has been so considered and worthwhile. And, you know, there are bumps in the road, but sometimes they happen for a reason. Mm. And it also can better the design mm -hmm. also yeah. when you have to overcome obstacles along the way. Definitely. Yeah. Hopefully the first of many projects in the Middle East. Yeah. Yes. It's been really We've a, loved it, an yeah. exciting process yeah. for us. It's been us. amazing. So during this process, I feel like every time we installed a room, we were like, that is our favorite room. We <laughs> love this room the best. And then we'd install another room and it would become our favorite. So my question to you guys is, now that we've installed all the rooms, which one is your favorite and why? So I think my favourite room is the library, um, mainly because you know you walk in there and it's such that it's this very you know very built up layered space and in, in terms of we wouldn't typically do a room with that much joinery in it as well either. So um, you know because with all those factors and hard surfaces in it, I think you know it, it's a very restful space you want to it be really in there is. you want to sit in there I think you want to relax in there and I just love all of the layering of the textures and the fabrics set against you know what is essentially a library so that's my favorite that's my turn isn't it mm -hmm. it's a tricky one isn't it, it um, is. I would say the tea room I really the like tea the tea room it's not you know it doesn't have huge proportions but I quite liked how it's quite compact but layered mm -hmm. and the joinery is made to look freestanding and it's been passed down you know maybe it's like an antique or, or something you know it's quite a layered looking room yeah um and i love the walnut finishes that we've done it's yeah. very warm and inviting mm. and um i think it's a great place to drink tea yeah, it is. yeah. very personal as well because it's got the client's yeah. original antique rugs which i think is a really nice touch yeah yes. it stemmed from downton abbey yeah. inspiration mm -hmm. uh, 
And that was a lovely story. And you guys got to go and visit High Clare Castle yeah, as part of your we research. Yeah, we did. We did. And you just walking around. You go, I don't know why. It's just weird because, you know, you look at the scale of High Clare compared to the tea room. And the tea room is very, you know, not compact, but it's a very cosy, inviting space. Yeah. And then you could just see aspects that we just wanted to bring here and, and, and include. And I think having their antique rugs helped massively with the colour scheme yeah. and bringing it all together in the concept. And what's your favourite room? Oh, my favourite room. Ooh. <laughs> I find it hard to narrow it down to one. I love the library. I love mm. all the rooms. Mm. I think the Magilis is probably my favourite, the room that we're in right now. Just the scale of it. And, you know, we had that CGI for so many years. Yeah. And I think when we look back at that um, time capsule, whatever footage, where we were all installing it, it just came together and it was like we were in the CGI and it just felt so magical. Actually, it felt even better than the CGI, but for me, this is such a grand room. We've never designed a Magilis before and it was just such an interesting process learning about the etiquette and the culture and how they use the space. Yeah. I've really enjoyed that. Yeah. So we've talked about the good things. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. What was the biggest obstacle on this project and how did you overcome it? I would say, so, you know, with it being a new build, essentially, there's a, there's a lot of M&A in this house and, and, and a lot that, you know, has to take precedent above everything else that we do. And, you know, one thing that we wanted to do from the off on the project was do the lighting design. I know we've talked about lighting before on the channel and it is very important to what we do. Um, but working around all of the M&E that was in the project was quite challenging because, you know, essentially we couldn't move any of it. It had to stay. Um, but what's, I, I, what's the M&E answer? Oh, mechanical know. and electrical, so <laughs> air conditioning, um, plumbing, all everything. The best bits. All the best bits, all the fun all bits. All the boring bits yeah. that we're in our time. <laughs> all the stuff you never get to see, yeah. but you need it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. And what about you, Brett? Was there anything specific to doing a project in Oman that was challenging? Um, I think we've learned a lot along the way, and I think our... Uh, resources that we have back at home that we use on our UK projects that we have on a daily basis they're not necessarily as easy to come by mm -hmm. um, when you're outside of the UK um, so before we left we created a install kit it's got a name hasn't it she's called Dora uh, so Dora's well travelled is it because she's Dora the Explorer yes okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's got everything in her backpack uh, no it's a tiered trolley um, and you name it if it's not in there, um, it will be for the future. Yeah. But it, it's got things like, you know, anything you could possibly felt think of. Felt pads. Felt pads, you know, super glue if it was ever needed. Luckily, I haven't needed to use yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, light bulbs. Light bulbs. Batteries. Batteries, wet wipes. Yeah. Just things that, you know, when you're kind of not near a shop or a supermarket, mm -hmm. it's, it's all there. So we just wanted to be fully prepared. Yeah. And um, even the install team that bought the furniture in were even borrowing from it. They were very impressed. <laughs> so, the, uh, the contractors have been borrowing from yeah, it as well, haven't they? <laughs> so we I think to replenish it. that will get better and we'll yeah. replenish it. But I think an obstacle was that, was just maybe not necessarily, you know, having everything at the click of a finger. Yeah. But so we just tried to improvise as much as possible. But yeah. there was still a few things that we didn't have. But again, that will... That will, that will come. Yeah, you're continually learning. I mean, I was so impressed when I came out here, the fact they had labels for the water bottles. I know it sounds Slippers. such a simple thing, but the amount of water bottles yeah. you can waste in a project like this, because you don't know whose is mm -hmm. whose. And my favorite part of the install kit was actually the bum bag, because that was life changing. <laughs> I mean, how many times a day do I lose my phone? Literally. I must waste hours, right? Yeah, you lose so many wasted step yeah, counts. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's not been good for my step count, but it has been really <laughs> handy. We might have to design an SPI approved bum bag for the next yeah. install. Though. I'm thinking maybe like a monogram, maybe a taupe colour, taupe yeah. yeah. leather. Yeah, that that sounds good. good. That sounds we'll great. Yeah, I want one. <laughs> we'll, we'll get on to that. Yeah, we did slippers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Slippers are essential on hard floor. Yes. Oh, my feet are killing me. Walkie talkies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been very organised. I was super impressed. Okay, so Anthony, is there any design rules that we've previously had that we've broken on this project? And if so, why? Design rules that we've broken? I would say, yeah, you know what? It, I think, you know, here is a, is a really good example. You know, when we're designing a home in England, um, you know, we would really look to have a much smaller gap between the sofa and the coffee table. We'd put in, if anything, we'd probably bring the sofas in quite a lot. Um, but because of the function of Imagilis and how they use, you know, you have to have 
you know, the sofas on the outside of the room. You know, if you do have a coffee table, it's got to be very much in the middle because, you know, it, it's you sit on the outside and then they come and sit on the floor to eat. So it's it here has, has been challenged us to think outside the box, yeah. shall we say. Um, so, yeah, I would say that. Yeah. I guess it's just about adapting our design yeah. to the local cultural requirements. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah, yeah, using the perimeter of the room is quite um, strange for us, isn't mm. it? Yeah, because we don't like furniture pushed against the wall no. normally. No. Yeah. Yeah, we we always want to bring it in, and it kind of creates a create a cozy seating area. Whereas here, it's it's although it's cozy, it's very much not that. So, yeah. okay, Brett, here's a question for you: Is there any tricks that we've got up our sleeve that we've used in this project that are maybe a slightly more affordable budget that our audience might be able to benefit from? Yeah, one that's jumping to the forefront of my mind is behind you've got the gorgeous fretwork, like laser cut screens hand sanded antique brass absolutely is beautiful but it's something not sustainable to use everywhere in um, a project like this so we came up with another solution down the circulation hallway where we did fretwork window film so it's um, bonded to the glass with like a like a film basically yeah. um, it's exactly the same design and it was done in a row color to match the perimeter mm. of the bronze frame so it looks like it's um you know was purchased at the same time mm. um but it's much more cost effective to do that it gives you an element of privacy um but also they're on sliding doors so it's much more practical to have that yeah and it kind of gives you that same effect as does. the screens but on a much better and budget. the reflection mm. you get down the hallway with yeah. the sun beaming in on the floor it's beautiful isn't it's it lovely it's amazing. Yeah. yeah really lovely so yeah, that's one. yeah, that was a good tip. I think we'll definitely use that one again. Yeah. Mm. So tomorrow we are handing over this project to our clients. They haven't seen it throughout the install. How are you feeling about handing over the project? Well, um, I think you're excited. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, excited. There's always a little bit of nervousness, I think, but that's just natural because you spend, you know, we've essentially spent four years of our lives creating this, um, you know, creating a home for them, what they've asked us to create. And we have worked, um, even though, you know, we, we designed a lot of this in COVID, um, we did manage and luckily managed to work on a very close, as close basis with the clients. So excitement and nervousness, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to it, really. Yeah. Um, I think, I think without us all being a bit big headed, <laughs> I think they're going to love it. Yeah. I think you, they will. You can't know. Yeah, for me it's exceeded even my hopes and expectations, mm -hmm. so I hope that they will be happy, I'm sure yeah. they will. Yeah. And do you think we're going to be able to keep it together? We were obviously quite tired, I think you're it's been a long go, two, three weeks. I think you'll go first, then, <laughs> then you'll look at me. I mean, no, I, I think you'll go first. No, I, I cried the other day, I think so. if, they say, <laughs> if they say something nice, we're all gone. <laughs> There's tissue boxes scattered everywhere. I mean, yeah, we couldn't have enough tissue, so no. we'll be fine on that front. I feel like you're off already. I am a little bit. For me, it's if my nostrils flare, then you're uncalled. <laughs> <laughs> well, we better cut it there because we're getting a little bit emotional. It's been a real journey, hasn't it? Yeah. I'm so proud of all the team. I'm proud of Brett and Anthony. I'm so thankful to our client, not only for trusting us with this process. It's our first project that we've completed in the Middle East, hopefully the first of many. They were such a delight to work with, yeah, weren't they? they're lovely. So Absolutely trusting. Lovely. Yeah, it's been honestly a career highlight for me. I've mm -hmm. absolutely loved yeah. it. I'd also think... I'd like to say thank you to all the team that have been here. We've had Sarah, Shauna, mm -hmm. Vanessa helping us. Every, yeah, that's the SBI team. Yeah, Ray Main. Ray Main, mm -hmm. Gem. Gem behind the camera, Cadug and Tate, who have been installing in insane temperatures. Yeah. The and the local team. contractors of mm -hmm. the curtain team. They were on a ladder putting up those uh, <laughs> stickers. Everyone has gone above and beyond. You know, people have been doing all nighters here. So it really does take a village. We're so proud of what we've all yeah. managed to achieve together. So that's a wrap from us in Amman. It's been an absolute pleasure to show you around this beautiful villa. If you'd like more regular updates, you can also follow us on Instagram and TikTok. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit that button. Take care and we'll see you very soon. <laughs>